Today, we're gonna to bring you along to see how we can get five different lighting looks from one location. Using the same model, we'll look at how to use portrait lighting or commercial fashion, maybe editorial or fine art storytelling to create distinctive lighting looks. So let's begin. There is beautiful natural light coming through the windows within this space. So it's a no brainer for any photographer to bring someone close to the light source, turn their heads towards it, and create with some simple short side lighting. Can you look out like you're, you see somebody, you're looking for them, you're waiting, anticipating, and all of a sudden just give that little look Beautiful. on your mouth like, oh, there they are. They're just a little happy. Yeah, gorgeous. Beautiful. Why don't we show them putting just a little bit of separation light on her hair. In terms of placement, one of the things that we might look for is to kind of get it up above her head and point it at roughly a 45 degree at the side of her because I'm not just trying to light the back of her hair. I'm trying to create separation along this side of her body. Now we're using the Godox 8100 Pro with the magnetic barn doors. But you could also use the V1 with a grid to control the lights on this scenario or any number of other lights. Okay, Jenna, we're gonna do almost the exact same thing that we just did before. Only this time we're gonna introduce that external light that's behind you just to create that little sense of separation and kind of see how it works. So here we go, bring your head back around, beautiful. Right there, let's take a look and kind of see how it appears. Gorgeous, now in this particular case, we have it just set to TTL and it feels a bit overexposed as if we're seeing a bit too much light. And there's a couple things that we could do in order to resolve that. But I think what I wanna do is go from just TTL at a regular setting and go ahead and lower that down. And for the purpose of, I guess, an experiment, uh -huh. we'll just go at a stop at a time. So we'll just go to a single stop at this point, okay? And so here we go. Better than what it was but it still feels a little too intense. So now I'm gonna bring it back down again and I'm gonna to go to negative two. So we're gonna do one more test. Mm -hmm. That's starting to work better yeah. because none of the light's overly drawing attention to itself, yeah. right? And for a final test, we'll take it all the way down to negative three here. You know what I love about it is it looks like the light source exactly. is what is creating that versus the light, and you always want it to look like the light source was real. Including an apparent light source within your framing of the background, in our case, the window in the distance, can help make your separation light feel less artificial and more realistic. Another way that we might change our lighting ratios within our exposure is to place a light outside the window, coming from the same direction as our apparent light source, to create more contrast or drama between the dark and light areas. Right there, beautiful, one more, one more, right there, gorgeous. Our second setup moves us away from the windows into the center of the room. So I think on this one, we want to try split lighting on her. Uh -huh. And I may have the light up a little too high with the shadow brim of the hat. We went ahead and we got our, our tripod set, uh -huh. specifically when we were trying to look at this from a, uh, what would you want to call this, a compositional standpoint. Symmetrical. We knew we wanted to get it symmetrical. And so just kind of changing my shutter speed here, but uh, we use that center line of the post as, as the thing that we wanted to bounce off of, and then go ahead and use those columns going on each side. Okay, could you do something for me real quick where maybe you didn't even have to think about it, you just kind of reached down and grabbed a little bit of your dress, maybe cross your feet as you're there, maybe your hand is resting softly and gently on here, beautiful, camera's gonna be this way, gorgeous, and then maybe just barely lean from the chest, falling into frame, oh, beautiful, look at that. I love what we've done with that 
space heater that's right in front of her. It really says something. It speaks to me. We, may, we <laughs> need to explain that it's a very cold day today, and this is just one way that we can show love to the model. That's right. Now we'll get that fixed here in a second. Anything you want to adjust in terms of the lighting on her face or anything like that, or you feel pretty good about that? I'm going to lower it just a little bit yep. more. Yep. I want to have a little form from the brim of the hat, but I also don't want it to take away from her eyes. Absolutely. Okay, gorgeous. I love what we've done on that. Can we open up our ambient? Sure. If you're at a hundredth of a second, can we even take it down since we're on I'm the tripod? I'm at a 60th. Okay. I just want to open up a little bit of the shadow side of her face as it comes across her nose. Correct. Just a little bit. So maybe it's something a little uh -huh. bit more like that? Yeah. yeah. I still want her to have that little bit of mystery. Do you know what? I thought I wanted to do split light. light uh -huh. But when I saw it, I said, no, I want to have a little more form wrap across. So instead of having the light here and then just splitting as it went across her uh -huh. face, uh -huh. you wanted to go ahead and bring it up from her a little bit more. Bring it forward. So and it just, feather it so that instead of pointing it directly at her, start just point it a little bit more this way. That is correct. So that the I'm edge standing, of the light. I'm standing directly in front of the light. The most contrast that I actually want in the image is right in here. Right, the that's what I'm trying room, to say. Yeah. I want, even though there could be darks and light, I don't want the same amount of contrast. I want to bring it to where I want the eye to look. We've switched to using the P2400 with the 59 inch reflector. Its silver interior and parabolic shape create clean specular highlights from a broad light source that feels like it wraps around our subject. We chose this powerful plugged in power pack because it helps us light large areas. Our third shot primarily uses strobes to create the drama. However, we did drop our shutter speed down to a 30th of a second to bring more detail to the black fabric and shadow areas. We can safely lower our shutter speed because we've dropped our ISO down to 100, stopped down our f-stop a bit, and powered up our strobes. Our main light is a beauty dish to the left of the camera. There is a gridded AD600 Pro on the right of the frame, creating the hair separation light. Finally, there are two more lights in the space behind the model. Let it twist just barely. Nice. Good. Nice. Yes, that hip. Beautiful. Our pre-visualized concept is a strong woman walking away from the smoke and fire. We knew the final interpretation would require some post-production to polish it and give it its final look. Okay, for this shot real quick, we wanted to go with something that was just a bit more dramatic in the way yes. that we were doing the lighting. So we wanted to add things like atmosphere, which was the aerosol that was being sprayed in the back. The use of color, which was the, uh, the orange gel, kind of bringing that warm tone mm -hmm. coming in from behind her. The other thing that we wanted to do was be able to add a little bit more contrasty light, use a beauty dish over here mm -hmm. to the side to be the main light and then go ahead and use a gridded light back here just to be a little separation light coming from the opposite. Detail. Yes. Yeah, just to start bringing in some detail and dimension mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And then drop that shutter speed down to about a 30th of a second mm -hmm. just to be able to, again, have that shadow detail kind of come back into the picture. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key oftentimes with your ambient or your fill light mm -hmm. is that's the one that blends stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of times makes your lighting feel more what would you say, harmonious or believable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It always needs to feel like, even if it has mystery to it, that it has harmony also. In the it. way that it, it kind uh -huh. of fits. During concept, and we also sketched this shot as a square for its final form of presentation to give it a more artistic feel, which is probably a great segue for us to spend a moment looking at how we typically approach a shoot. When we think about just lighting and, and so forth, is it something where you just wing it when you walk in and you just kind of go, okay, well, I got this, this, and this there. I'm going to start figuring how to make it work. Or does it help to sometimes plan it ahead of time? I always plan ahead of time, but then you all, when you walk into a situation, you have all these variables. For example, over here on the other side of us that the camera can't see right now, there's this beautiful light pattern coming in from the windows. And I think for our last shot, I would like to work over there and actually use some of the beautiful structure and Front, sure, front. so maybe we can pull in some of that, so that for, natural window light that's coming in and doing a pattern on the floor and incorporate that within our shot. Yes, which we had absolutely no idea when we came to explore Ahead this of on time. an overcast day. That's right. 
we go ahead and, and storyboard out in our minds mm -hmm. ahead of time, and sometimes mm -hmm. we even do that on paper, how mm -hmm. we're gonna do our lighting. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll draw out kind of what we're thinking in terms of a modifier. Can I go get it while you talk? Absolutely. So we might storyboard out in our minds kind of what we're thinking, uh, maybe the, the type of light or the approach that we're gonna do. Oftentimes that's informed by the, the decisions that you're gonna make. Uh, for instance, with this being a video, video that we're making, uh, we wanted to make sure that we had lights that were plugged in just so that we could mm -hmm. consistently have the modeling lights to help you be able to see. Yeah, you started writing all the things that you were thinking about that you wanted yes, to incorporate. Yes, wonderful penmanship that kind of shows you how I'm hey, thinking through the... You know, most artists have chicken scratch anyway, uh -huh. but then we started just drawing them out, just enough of a sketch that we knew what we were doing so that we knew which side the lights were coming from and how we were going to even compose each shot. Yeah. Then you just figure out a list of things that you might think that you're you're going to use because mm -hmm. uh, you never want to pack so heavy that you're you're burdened, but you don't want to pack so light that you're scrambling. <laughs> that you miss one. <laughs> you miss the one key that, thing that, that, one that it would thing take. I forgot. It. That's oh, right. That's right. Our fourth shot takes us in a more editorial direction, which we envision in black and white. So we shot it that way in camera. It's possible to use two lights coming from mm -hmm. the exact same position with one of them being your main light. I would call it structured lighting. A structured lighting, uh -huh. yeah, that's the better. Because I want to create a deep shadow under her chin. She has this beautiful jawline that, that uh, because we've used Jenna in the past, we just knew how we could create a how structured photo and completely overpower the ambient light that's in the room. Exactly, but then you bring in your fill light coming in from that exact same side, and now all of a sudden it, it kind of creates this feeling of spotlight effect on the face and then just seeing some detail throughout the rest of the frame. Just enough, because without that little blend of the, uh, of the uh, fill light, mm -hmm. it can create just a little too much drama, and you want that little bit of blending uh, between the two and just a little bit of more detail in the blacks. If I was just to turn off our main light there and just shoot with the parabolic, it's gonna look something like this. So you can see that there's just a little bit of fill light coming into the frame. And now if I go ahead and turn back on our main light and I turn off our fill light, we're gonna get something that looks a lot like this, which in general means that we have a beautiful girl it's very starkly lit, and we're just starting to get a little bit of light in terms of the background and so forth, but there's not a lot of depth. It's kind of a very flat, dramatic shot, very stark in the way that it comes together. And when we bring in that fill light, and now starts to come together like this. And so this kind of has a little bit more detail and dimension as you kind of look across at the different uh, background uh, materials and stuff. It gives her a sense of being in an environment. Here we go. And, right there, right there. Beautiful, beautiful. Good, 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 good. That hand that's low is probably a little too low. Probably bring it up just a little higher. Yes, there you go, very nice. We're basically at your waist up. Yep, nice, very good. Perfect, perfect, good. This simple two light approach combines two different qualities of light coming from the same direction to the left of the camera. We are entirely overpowering any ambient and only using our strobes to illuminate our subject. One AD600 is powered up and gridded and set as our primary light source, creating that structured lighting around the model's face. The second light is in the parabolic reflector and powered down because it adds more detail to the darker areas and background. This approach helps us blend our overall lighting while not creating secondary shadows. The underlying effect on your lighting ratios is to control or convey the sense of moodiness you want within your pictures. To us, it's very much a salt to taste. It sure is. It's, it's like the difference between a cook and a chef. Yes. The chef so. is just going to salt to taste. The, the cook is going to go, okay, I think I got the perfect ratio of salt. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the chef will taste and go, no, I need a little more. It just needs to be just right. And just the other thing I would love to say is that, you know, either you start off from the artistic side or you kind of start from the scientific, you know, you mean formula as a photographer? side. Yes, yes, the, and yes. The, the formula people need to go to the artistic side, the artistic, artistic side, side needs to, to go to the 
formula, you need to end up blending both of those things and, start, and, and ultimately from that I hope you do create art. On my fill light here, I ended up just bringing it up 0.3, uh, you know, a full stop was too much. I just wanted a third of a stop, a little bit more uh, yeah. fill coming in. And, yeah. and that's the kind of thing where I go, practice, experience, eyeball uh, teaches you. Our final shot lends itself to a more fine art storytelling approach to lighting. Part of that includes using the lighting that's naturally coming through the windows, creating this architectural shape or pattern on the floor within our frame. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off our flash and just shoot a quick shot so we kind of get an idea of what it's going to be like exposure-wise without the flash. And so we can review exactly what we got there, but lovely elements going on in terms of what the natural ambient lighting is coming in from the back. But what's lacking is any sense of light hitting our subject so that we can enjoy her <laughs> as, as part of this. So now what I'm going to do is turn my flash on. I'm using the AD600 Pro just so that we could put it on a grid and kind of angle it right here. One of the things that we've done is dial it all the way down so it's at 1256 because we just want a little wink of a light. And so when we add that into there, we get something that's starting to look a little bit more like this. Just beautiful shot of her and now it's just about tension and then adding atmosphere. So David, Absolutely. you add your atmosphere if you would please. Beautiful, 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 and clear. Okay, here we go. The house is on fire, that's right. Right there, right there, right there. Now eyes piercing to us, right there, right there. Good, 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 good. Oh. Relax, let's take a look and review. The deer head here, coming forward to her, and then obviously having the chair in the background creates a triangle for us. And then this angle is kind of going from the left to the right side and going sloping along this way. When we come from the top right to the, or top left to the bottom right, that's what we call the angle of grace. When we go from the bottom left up to the top right, that's more the angle of tension. And so because this is a shot that conveys the emotion of something full of tension, uh, the placement of her in that lower left quadrant like that is probably what's most appropriate. Going up through the wheelchair, yes. Yep. Got it, got it, got it. Lift, lift, lift. Beautiful, oh, beautiful. Look to the light. Look to me, I want this shoulder higher, the front shoulder right there, good, good, good. Looking past me right here, right here. Last time, lift up. Oh. And smile, lift up and smile. <laughs> So for this final shot, what we were really trying to do was figure out how to work with the existing light, which was doing a beautiful pattern mm -hmm. uh, down here on the ground. Compositionally arrange it, but then uh, using the battery powered AD600, put a grid on it so that we didn't have light just spilling around within the scene that would then start to lose some of our pattern. We wanted it to almost feel like it was coming from the same light source, but just barely a little bit extended on her face. Yep, yep. so coming around. Just wrapping yep. around. And of course, it's supposed to invoke a sense of tension, her crawling there and so forth, and the way that the hands are positioned, the stressness of the fingers, things along those lines. So a very simple shot in terms of lighting, just a single light, probably more interesting the sense of how do you create a concept and work within a scene versus where we originally started, which was just classic portraiture, a person against a window or, or something like that. You're just trying to get that. They love storytelling. Again, even part of this was just because of studying Andrew Wyatt, you know, and his whole Christina's world. Sure, and, well, and that's the obvious homage for a picture uh -huh, like this. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. But instead of not seeing her and seeing her from the backside, except for the tension, <laughs> bringing it around to the front. Yes. From a storytelling aspect, we were playing off just a few simple concepts, such as light versus dark, or the alternation of life and death, strength and weakness, or struggles versus determination. Here are a couple more examples of using storytelling in pools of lights from other shoots we've done in the past for Godox.
Now let's stop and take a minute and look at where we placed our lights, what were their settings, and what modifiers did we use. After scouting the location, we sketched out the initial design. We purposely built compositional triangles using leading lines, styling, and gesture. And then we thought it'd be fun to repeat the alternating light and dark areas both horizontally and vertically. And all of this is done for the sole purpose of rewarding you for looking as your eye moves in and around the picture. We set our camera to ISO 100 at f8 in a 30th of a second to allow the ambient light coming from the lanterns and fire to show. Outside the door, we double stacked two heads to mimic the sun striking the main subject from head to toe. We also put another light shooting through the window. All three exterior flashes are set to full power. We hid two behind the door and desk at a quarter power inside the room. And then there's one illuminating the mother and daughter set to half power. We bounced the last light into the corner, opening up the shadows and blending it all together. That one was set to full power. And there you have it. We admire how theatrical lighting designers use light to frame the stage, as well as directing our eyes where to look. One helpful way to think about lighting a scene is that it's equal parts sculpting and painting, covering large areas and chiseling away at smaller ones. For David and myself, the art side of things always informs our technical decisions. We want our lighting to establish an emotional undercurrent and to incorporate light in a way that creates interesting visual shapes and forms. When concepting the scene of a 1950s train station, we wanted the lighting to be both expressive and purposeful. Because of that, we imagined the time of day to be about 5.15 p.m., suggesting a mixture of strong light and shadows with a bit of dapple. We wanted the three down lights to create an architectural statement. The remaining lights are used to communicate mood and atmosphere and help bring emphasis to different areas of importance. One useful tip is to pay close attention to where you place both your highlights and shadows. To emphasize your main subjects, seek to separate them from the background to communicate their importance. What a great opportunity it was to go out here and shoot and create for you today. It's such a privilege Absolutely. to create with my dad. It is great. <laughs> it is the highlight of my life to work with my son. I think one of the things that's probably worth mentioning is what joy it was to work within a space like this, mm -hmm. where you have already a sense of structure that you can build around, but you've got space. You've got a little grunge. You've got a little grunge. Yeah. You know, those kind of things. As photographers, it's yeah. always fun and enjoyable. But there's lots of uh, opportunities to find geometric shapes and mm -hmm. leading lines and, you know, uh, strong areas of contrast, uh, variance in uh, texture. Mm -hmm. All those things work together to hopefully accentuate the final result that you get within your photograph. Yeah, absolutely. Now, some of you may be wondering, with all this fancy equipment, what tripod are we using? Eagle-eyed viewers may recognize it as the classic Tilt-All. We love them because not only was it David's first tripod back in 1974, but one of our favorite photography heroes, Irving Penn, used it as well. What a privilege it is to spend time with you today. Thank you again to b &H for inviting us to partake in this fabulous event we call Depth of Field. And to Godox. Not only is it a joy for us to serve as educators of light, but also because Godox is making lighting more accessible for all photographers. Okay, you guys do that again, just kind of talk. I, what I really love is just this feature over here on the left that just looks like there's a separation ambient light that's coming back to. <laughs> I have no idea. You, di you didn't uh, wipe out the drive, did you? I did it. Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> If you'd like to connect with David or myself, we'd love to hear from you. Obviously, it's impossible to put everything that somebody's learned over a career of lighting into a simple 25-minute video. We hope that there's been just a few nuggets that are in place that you can take and start to use when you're out there on location. If there's something that benefited you from this video, please let us know. Thanks for watching and see you soon.